Our Lord in today's gospel is telling us very clearly that he is the master and Lord of all things. And indeed, he will point out that the Pharisees and the scribes and those who would not listen to his teaching would, uh, would go so far as to call him Beelzebub, that is, the Lord of flies. Ultimately, they were claiming that our Lord was the God, the God of death. And so they, permit, they performed the most ultimate of blasphemy, to proclaim that he himself who is life is death itself. And so our Lord reminds us in today's gospel that we all come from him and that we did nothing on our part in order to be created. For God created us out of nothing. And we we mean he had no existing material matter. But when God creates, we know that he creates out of love. And so we come from an act of the most profound love because we come from God himself. And so it is to God we are to return. And our Lord tells us we are not to be afraid of the things that God has taught us. For if we are to return to him, we must defend him. Not that God, strictly speaking, needs any creature to defend him. But as members of the mystical body, he tells us very clearly in today's gospel that we are to preach the gospel in season and out of season. What our Lord taught the apostles in private, they are to speak in the light. What he whispered to them in those, in those lessons that he would give at Capernaum and other places, they are to proclaim from the housetops, and they are not to count the cost, for they will see in the Master himself the very cost that, the, the, the very cost that proclaiming the truth uh, could, could uh, cost them, that is, their very lives. And so we are not to be afraid, as our Lord tells us, but to anyone but him who can destroy both soul and body. And so when our Lord instructs the disciples today that every hair of the head is counted, he means that he knows all the members of his mystical body and that his providential care takes care of them at all times and in all places, gives them the grace to do all things. For ultimately, if we merely depend on the gifts that God has given us by nature, if those gifts are not sanctified by his grace, they ultimately count nothing towards our salvation. Indeed, we become what St. Paul tells us, nothing but clanging symbols. Um, Or as St. Augustine put it, (coughs) the vices, the virtues of the pagans are nothing but beautiful vices, and that is the lot of man who depends upon his own natural abilities to work out his salvation in this world. And so, our Lord, in telling us that even the hairs of our head are numbered, also wishes to tell us, tell us that all our thoughts, words, and deeds are counted by him, and they, would be, they will be judged according to whether they conform to his will or not. And so, our Lord is truly telling us today that he is our master, but we need not fear this master, for he is a master of love. And ultimately, our Lord proves this by entrusting us to his mother's care. For indeed, we have much to fear if we were try to approach God in and of himself. But when we approach our Lord through the mother, then we see him through the eyes of the mother, and then we learn we have nothing to fear. For we learn that our God is a good God, and that he wishes only thing only one thing, that is, our salvation. And so the commandments do not become burdens, but they become the acts of love. When we obey them, they become the acts of love in the members of the mystical body who are aware that every hair of their head is numbered, but also while our deeds and our words and our thoughts are counted, the Lord himself cares for us like he does the sparrows of the field. And so his providential care is always with us and we truly have nothing to fear. And so let us go forward this day like the holy martyrs of old who understood so well that they had nothing to fear. For if they defend the master, the master will defend them. And and we need not worry about what the world thinks, what the world says, or in some cases, what the world will do to us. 
For we know very clearly from the history of salvation that the world often will persecute the members of Christ's mystical body, and so they would willingly give their lives up as we must be willing to give our lives up. But we must do so not with the bitterness of the pagan, but we must do so as an act of charity. For the true Christian knows that if the members of this world, the enemies of Christ, come to seek him and seek him to the point of destroying his life, he knows that that is the sacrifice necessary in order to claim those souls for the kingdom of Christ. And so, many souls in the, in the, in the history of the church who have died at the hands of their persecutors would be there to greet them when the persecutor themselves would enter into heaven. And so, let us strive to do all things in accord with the teachings of our Master so that we too may cooperate in that most profound mission, that mission of the Son and of the Mother, the mission of the salvation of souls. And let us do so knowing that our Lord has entrusted us to his mother's maternal care, and so we truly have nothing to fear. For if God is our judge, our lady is the dispenser of the whole economy of mercy, for her son has entrusted to her the distribution of every grace <clears throat> that will come into the world. And this mystery is accomplished not only at the time of the mother of God, but it is truly true to say that all graces that have come to the human family have come to them through the maternal mediation of the mother of God, even that grace that gave our first parents the grace to, con to repent of their sin and so become a true, a true son and a true daughter of Almighty God. And so, if we are to rec be recognized by our Father, as our Lord tells us that we must, as it were, accomplish that union with our Father, let us do so in the same manner that the Lord uh, was recognized by the Father. That is, he gives us the key to our salvation, to die in the hands of the Mother of God so that she may present us to the Eternal Father who will recognize us in our death as in what he recognized his son in his death, not the author of death as the Pharisees and scribes would accuse Christ of being, but as the author of life. And our Lord loved life so much that he was willing to sacrifice that sacred humanity so that we may have life again, but not life strictly in the flesh, but more importantly, life in the spirit. That life that loves life so much, it is willing to die in order to preserve it because it understands the life we are called to receive is not merely the life in this world, but the life in this world is given to us in order to prove to God our love for him so that we may be united with him forever in the world to come where true life exists for those who have loved the Lord because they see him as he is face to face in the blessed vision of Almighty God for all eternity. And he joins the angelic choirs. He joins the choirs of martyrs, confessors, and all those virgins who have gone before him, who have proven their love for Almighty God. God, and so they all sing the praises of the good God and good Master who has taken care of them in this life in order that they may be with him forever in the life to come.